10 Shocking Facts About Jesse James Jesse James stands as one of the most infamous outlaws in the history of the American Wild West. As a key figure in the notorious James Jambier gang, his audacious exploits in robbing banks, stagecoaches, and trains during the mid to late 19th century propelled him to a legendary status. It wasn't just Jesse James' life that captivated the public. For decades, rumors persisted that he had faked his death. Until these claims were disproven in the 1990s, numerous individuals even came forward, claiming to be the infamous outlaw. Beyond his reputation as a ruthless murderer, calculating robber, and elaborate showman, Jesse James had lesser known traits. Born into a prosperous family of slave-owning farmers, he was deeply loved by his mother throughout his life and later became a devoted family man and father. Here are 10 fascinating facts about Jesse James. 10. He was a preacher's son. Jesse Woodson James was born on September 5, 1847, in Clay County, Missouri, into a prosperous family. His mother, Zerelda Cole, hailed from Kentucky, and his father, Robert James, was a Baptist minister and a slave-owning hemp farmer. In 1850, Robert James traveled to California to preach in the gold mining camps, but fell ill and died. In 1852, Zerelda remarried, but Jesse, his brother Frank, and his sister Susan were sent to live with another family. Zerelda eventually left her second husband, returned to the family farm, remarried in 1855, and had four more children. Despite Frank and Jesse's later outlaw status, their mother Zerelda remained their steadfast supporter. 9. He had an unusual nickname. Jesse James acquired the nickname Dingus after accidentally shooting off the tip of his finger while cleaning a pistol. Disinclined to use profanity, he reportedly exclaimed, that's the Dodd Dingus pistol I ever saw. Years later, when his body was exhumed for identification, the missing finger on his skeleton was crucial in confirming his identity. 8. He was a Confederate guerrilla. The border state of Missouri was a hotbed for guerrilla warfare during the American Civil War. As staunch Confederates, Jesse and his family supported the Southern cause. In 1864, Jesse and his brother Frank joined the group of Confederate guerrillas led by Bloody Bill Anderson, also known as Bushwhackers. This group was infamous for its ruthless and brutal actions against Union soldiers. Jesse participated in the Centralia Massacre, which resulted in the deaths of 22 unarmed Union soldiers and the wounding or death of over 100 federal troops, with many bodies left gruesomely mutilated. As retribution, all family members of Jesse and Frank James were forced to leave Clay County. 7. He was shot twice before becoming an outlaw. Before embarking on his notorious outlaw career, Jesse James suffered two gunshot wounds to the chest. The first incident occurred in 1864 when he attempted to steal a saddle from a farmer. The second took place in 1865 during a skirmish with Union troops near Lexington, Missouri. After these injuries, Jesse was nursed back to health by his cousin, Zerelda Z. Mims, whom he would later marry. It was following his recovery that Jesse and his brother Frank united with other former Confederate guerrillas to begin their infamous careers in robbing banks, stagecoaches, and trains. 6. He wasn't exactly a Wild West Robin Hood. Jesse James, as a prominent and infamous member of the James Younger Gang, became a legendary figure in the lore of the American West. Although popular portrayals often depict him as a Robin Hood figure who robbed the rich to give to the poor, there is no evidence that the gang ever shared their loot with anyone else. Between 1860 and 1862, the gang was implicated in more than 20 bank and train robberies, numerous murders, and the theft of approximately $200,000. After the American Civil War, thousands of African Americans moved west to the frontier, seeking freedom and an escape from prejudice. Many became cowboys, and it's estimated that up to 25% of these cowboys were black. Despite this, their stories were largely overlooked by Hollywood as westerns grew in popularity. The noble image of the James Gang was in part a fabrication by editor John Newman Edwards, who wrote glowing articles about the gang, stating, The James Gang are men who might have sat with Arthur at the round table, ridden in tourney with Sir Lancelot, or won the colors of Guinevere. 5. He was a family man. Jesse James married his first cousin, Zerelda, in 1874, after a courtship that lasted nine years. They had two children together. Known for his devotion to his family, Jesse was a loving husband and father who cherished the time he spent with his wife and children. 4. He loved publicity. Jesse James had a flair for courting publicity, often engaging directly with the media. He was known to distribute press releases to bystanders at his crime scenes. One such statement declared, the most daring robbery on record. The southbound train on the Iron Mountain Railroad was stopped here this evening by five heavily armed men and robbed of dollars. The robbers were all large men, none of them under six feet tall. They were masked and started in a southerly direction after they had robbed the train, all mounted on fine-blooded horses. 
there is a hell of an excitement in this part of the country. 3. His gang was defeated trying to rob a Minnesota bank. On September 7, 1876, the James Younger gang made an ill-fated attempt to rob the First National Bank of Northfield, Minnesota. Motivated by rumors that a former Union general and governor had deposited $75,000 in the bank, they saw it as a lucrative target. However, the bank's cashier refused to open the safe, triggering a shootout that resulted in the deaths of the cashier, a bystander, and two gang members. Two weeks after the boxed robbery, the Younger brothers were captured and imprisoned. The James brothers managed to escape and lived under assumed names for the next two years. By 1879, Jesse had gathered a new group of criminal associates and resumed his outlaw activities. 2. He was killed by a member of his own gang. In April 1882, Jesse James met an unremarkable end while dusting a framed piece of embroidery that read In God We Trust in his rented Missouri home, where his wife and two children were also present. The person who fatally shot him in the back of the head was Bob Ford, a recent addition to James' gang. Ford had made an agreement with the governor of Missouri to assassinate James in exchange for a reward and legal immunity. A contemporary woodcut depicts the moment Robert Ford infamously shot Jesse James from behind as he was hanging a picture, with Ford's brother Charles witnessing the act. The woodcut dates from between 1882 and 1892. The assassination captivated the public, who largely viewed it as a cowardly act since James was shot from behind. Despite this, the Fords later capitalized on the event by reenacting it in a traveling show. Bob Ford himself was killed in 1894. 1. His body was later exhumed. Jesse James was initially buried on the James family farm. However, rumors soon circulated that he had faked his own death, leading several individuals over the years to claim they were Jesse James. In 1995, in response to these persistent rumors, scientists exhumed what were believed to be his remains from M.T. Olivet Cemetery in Kearney, Missouri, where they had been reinterred in 1902. DNA tests were conducted on the remains, and researchers confirmed that they almost certainly belonged to the notorious 19th century outlaw. Conclusion As we've explored the life of Jesse James, it's clear that his legacy is a complex blend of fact and fiction, myth and reality. From his early days as a preacher's son to his rise as a notorious outlaw, Jesse James captured the imagination of the American public and left an indelible mark on history. His life was a series of daring escapades, ruthless actions, and deep personal connections. While often romanticized as a Wild West Robin Hood, the truth reveals a man driven by vengeance, loyalty to his cause, and a flair for the dramatic. Jesse James remains a symbol of the tumultuous times in post-Civil War America, embodying the spirit of rebellion and the allure of the outlaw. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the life of Jesse James. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more fascinating historical insights. And let us know in the comments which part of Jesse James' story surprised you the most. Until next time, keep exploring the past to understand our present.